item number 11, cylinder number 3868, strip A. On August 18th, I found out that I'd have the opportunity to join the Ocean Joy crew for the Quatsino annual food fishing trip in northern Vancouver Island. I joined the crew in a kind of desperate state as some of the recent crew members had had injuries and they were at port in Port McNeil dropping injured people off and taking on yours truly to record what was going on. Adding to the exasperation was some foggy conditions. The uh, crew couldn't see where the fish were in the water looking for finners and jumpers. And we had already had a late start on the season because of the commercial opening. So our food fish was already late and we had a very antsy village. Eager to put the foul luck behind us, the captain decided to make a set at the first sign of finners and jumpers, even in the fog. And the set net was out and the lines were out before I ever knew what was happening. And I started filming after they started reeling in. The first set was reeled in and after the net had all been wound up, it was found that no fish were caught in the first set. This further disheartened the crew. Another commercial vessel came by because they were equally stumped at the fishery on this foggy and quiet day. I used the quiet period after the fog lifted a bit to record some aerial photography from our new drone to get a better picture of what the ship looked like at sea. The ship seemed to be in fine working order from the air and it seemed like the only problem that we were having is that we couldn't find fish in order to make sets. After a few more hours of drifting around, we found a small school of sockeye finning and jumping on one part of the sound. So the boat headed over there and we had our first bit of luck that day with this small set that we were bringing in.
The crew and the captain's spirits got a lot better after we got some fish in the hold. You can see the crew here throwing the fish into the hold container. The excitement faded after set and set after set were placed that day and no more fish were brought up. And then to compound to the final depression of the crew, the net itself got tangled and fouled. The need to stop fishing and just work on setting up the net, which pretty much ended the day. One of the final sets that day finally yielded a small purse of sockeye that we used to lift our spirits before we called it a night. Item number 24, cylinder number The second day proved to be quite a different matter and we had one set that was over a thousand fish. That's the set that is shown being hauled in now. I had never seen the haul of fish before and for somebody who's not been on a boat it was an amazing thing to see such a huge catch and it was such a relief to know that everybody in the community would get their quota of 28 fish per house. It was a very exciting moment. After the big haul, it was time to head back to dock. When we got there, we stowed away the extra parts and the crew at the dock started to get ready with something called a transvac in order to pump the fish out of the hole and into the tote. Boats were then taken from Celtic Seafoods in Port Hardy and transported to Quatsino Village site here at IR-18 in Cool Harbor. 
where the totes were stacked up with forklifts and ready to be delivered to households. Many members also brought their trucks and vehicles to the totes and took coolers individually from the totes to take back to their houses or to transport to relatives farther down island. Item number 43, cylinder number 6093, strip A. It's important that all the members of the community get involved in the participating in the distribution of the fish and so the kids are taken out of the daycare and brought down to where the foods are distributed and and shown just exactly how food is traditionally shared within the village It's important that the distribution of the fish is all recorded and so as fish is dropped off or collected, the names of the houses are written down. As the fish was distributed, I went from house to house recording how different families prepared their fish and what parts of fish were their favorite and how they used to trade with their other family members. Okay, it so it's like that. Right. Wash all the blood and throw it in a pot. What's that? Yeah. It's a lot of meat there, right? But yeah. There's a lot of meat there. Some cheeks. Cheeks are good, but eyeballs are better. You eat the nose, too. I used to trade my nose to, for my, with my mom. I'd give her my nose, and she'd give me her eyeballs. <laughs> but I want to explain it to you. Okay. Is that uh, usually we leave um, about that much, a little bit more, and then we smoke them. Mm. Item number three, cylinder number six zero nine nine, strip A. What's that round one there? What's that for? The round knife on the end, yeah. Oh, you can probably feel the bones better with it. Yeah, you can. Thanks, man. Okay. The sticks in. It's an incredibly busy day around the community. Every house is very busy cutting, preparing, jarring fish, smoking it, barbecuing it, transporting it, and there's just no time to waste. I'm glad that everybody took a moment or two just to say hi and tell me what they were up to.
Item number nine, cylinder number 6105, strips A and B. At the end of the food fish day, the bins from the individual houses are collected and all the remains are put in totes to be disposed of at the landfill. It's a very busy day and everybody does their best to make the best of the catch that we had for the year. What's the cloth there for? You're the one you're using it. Oh, it takes so tough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.